Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be covering buckling capacity for intermediate and long columns. Uh, we're going to be looking at the effect that imperfections such as residual stress can have on the capacities of uh, intermediate and long columns. And lastly, we're going to determine the member capacity, uh, denoted as NC, uh, which is related to the flexural capacity strength of our, our columns. Okay, now starting with our buckling capacity. Now remember before we said that length was very important, especially in compression. This is due to the fact that it affects our buckling capacity. So for our short columns, remember that the ones that are short and stubs, so they are compact, will most likely yield uh, uh, before anything else. For our intermediate columns on the other hand, it becomes a bit more complex where so we have a mixture of yielding and potentially local buckling and flexural buckling. And for our long columns, we know that they do not reach the, the strengths of uh, those columns that are much shorter. So, and they always flexurally buckle before they actually yield. So looking at the two diagrams here, on the left we have one for the long column, on the right we have one for the intermediate column. We can see that intermediate columns have a greater strength because they actually induce some yielding and local buckling. On the left, we see a uh, long column. It's, the strength is very low, and it is mostly affected by uh, flexural buckling to a very high degree. And because of this, residual stress and imperfections in general will affect the intermediate column more, because our intermediate column will actually goes up into the area above first yield, where it actually starts yielding. Yielding is not actually a problem for our long columns.